welcome to Inquiring Minds. My name is Doug and I'm back with today's fountain pen review, this Hongdian A6 Skeleton Piston Filler. In the last few weeks, it feels like I've reviewed more skeletons than Jason fought off. We've seen them from Jinhao, Asvine, and now Hongdian. I think this one might be the best of the bunch. So let's take a look right now. Well, they're coming by the truckload now, or boatload. There's another package from China. And unlike the last one, I know what this one is. Let's open this package. And there was a third pen after all in the package that dropped out onto the floor when I was trying to get the packing off. This is also a skeleton-like fountain pen, but this one's from Hongdian instead of Asvine. And of course, it comes with another little Hongdian wrench. And this is the Hongdian A6 piston filler with that skeleton style. And this one, this is a fine steel nib. And of course, it's a piston filler. And we'll give this one a review. The Hongdian A6 piston filler. I'll show the parts and features of this pen, some measurements and size comparisons, and then talk about what I like and what I don't like so much about this fountain pen. Hongdian has been very impressive with its offerings lately, and there have been a lot of them. Alphanumerically, the models have been A6, D1, D5, N6, N7, N8, N10, N11, N12, N1S, and 100, just to name a few. I was hoping to review the N10 this week as I was supposed to get it last week, but it has been bouncing back and forth across Canada for the last 12 days. From Mississauga to Montreal, Montreal to Halifax, Halifax to Toronto, and Toronto to Halifax yet again. I think the N10 must be made of a super bouncy rubber. But overall, the A6 is a dual-fold shaped chromed brass over clear blue acrylic piston filler. From the top, we see a nicely designed Hongdian medallion under clear acrylic dome that says Hongdian and the model number A6 and has the Hongdian bird surrounded by stylized laurel leaves. It's very nicely done. There are a couple of steps up to the skeleton cap, which is a spiral of stylized climbing vines. And we see the motif circling the cap as well. The clip is a long, smooth taper with an arrowhead that extends from the cap and is nicely springy and usable. The cap is straight to a raised band which has two rows of coin-like reading and a center ring with a repeated leaf pattern. There's a small taper down to the barrel which is straight to here where there is a small tapering ring of the same leaf pattern as on the cap, and then the smooth chrome piston knob tapers down to a flat bottom. The cap unscrews with one rotation to reveal a tapering chrome section with a smooth flare towards number six size steel Hongdian fine nib and black plastic feed. The section is slick, but these two grooves and the smooth cap threads help give your grip a better purchase, so I don't find it uncomfortable. Let's get a closer look at this nib. It has a teardrop breather hole, a flower-like pattern. Since 1997, Hongdian F in brackets for fine and 35 denoting the length of the nib in millimeters. Other than the color, the nib is identical to the one on the Hongdian N11. The section nib and feed are identical on both pens. The nib and feed are part of a nib assembly that unscrews easily for maintenance or replacement. The section does not unscrew, but because the nib unit unscrews, it's easy to get at the top of the pen through the section. The inside of the cap shows no ledge to meet with the section to seal the nib, but the barrel threads into the inside sheath of acrylic, so I think they assume that that will seal the nib from evaporation. And I've had no issues of hard starts for the short time I've been using the pen. The cap will go on the end of the barrel, but not securely at all, and makes the pen way too long and back weighted. So I'll classify this pen as non-posting. Unposted, the pen is still heavy at almost 28 grams, but it's nicely balanced and really feels great in the hand. 
And as I said earlier, I don't find this section slippery because those extra grooves in it right there and the cap threads really sort of anchor my fingers. I bought this pen from Sally's Easy Buy Shop on Etsy and it sells for around $30 US and comes in three finishes, blue, black, and gold with two nib options, EF and F. Now let's look at some size comparisons. And here is the Hongdian A6 Skeleton Piston Filler with an Asvine P80 Skeleton Piston Filler, a Hongdian N11 Blue Rhombus Cartridge Converter, a Hongdian N12 Acrylic Piston Filler, and a Hongdian N1S Acrylic Piston Filler. Now let's look at them posted. And here they are posted. I don't post the A6 or the P80 because they really don't post at all. The N11 Blue Rhombus is a little bit long and unstable posted, whereas both the acrylic piston fillers from Hongdian, the N12 and the N1S post very nicely. You'll be seeing the N12 review really soon. Now let's look at them unposted. And here they are unposted. And they're all plenty long enough to write with unposted comfortably. Now let's look at some measurements, then I'll be back with a writing sample. And we're back with the writing portion of the review. Before we begin writing, I want to show you a video I made that demonstrates how to get ink into a big piston filler like this when you're filling from a tiny little bottle, like the ones from the Diamine ink vent calendar, or from a sample vial. So what do you do when you have a favorite ink, and you have a piston filler that you want to put your favorite ink in, but you've only got the ink in this little Diamine ink vent calendar bottle? Well. The piston doesn't fit down inside there. So you get yourself an Ink Buddy ink vent calendar stabilizer. If it's a chameleon or a shimmer ink, where this is both, shake it up first and open the ink. If you're lucky, that will go down in there, but most piston fillers don't fit that tiny little neck. So unscrew your nib, get a syringe, syringe up your ink, Always be putting the top on first and slide the syringe right into the piston and syringe in some ink. Only put it so far in there. If you can see down in there, I'm only going to put it up to where those threads of the section are because as Archimedes once said, Eureka, I've discovered it. Ink all over my pants. That's why he was in the bathtub. He was getting the ink off his pants. I am Springfield's chief hydrological and hydrodynamical engineer. Hydrological and hydrodynamical. Talk about running the gamut. No civilization in history has ever considered chief hydrological engineer a calling. <clears throat> yes, yes, the Cappadocian's fine. Turn the pen upside down and open the piston a little bit to flood that feed like that with ink. Wipe off your nib and you're ready to write. And now we're back and we're full of ink. This is Clairefontaine 90 GSM paper. And this is the Hongdian A6 skeleton. And it has a number six size steel fine nib. So let's check the wetness. And it's decently wet. And this nib again with Hongdian is super smooth and juicy right out of the box. These Hongdian nibs lately are just wonderful right out of the box, the bag or the plastic wrapper. And I generally don't enjoy a fine nib, but these fine nibs are so nicely smooth and juicy, they border on being mediums. And the ink is Diamine Arctic Blast. And it's from the 2022 Diamine Ink Vent Calendar. And here is my sample on Tomoe River paper. It's a beautiful blue ink that shades from teal to purple, sheens pink, and shimmers in pale blue sparkles. Very nice ink. And as to line variation, you can squeeze out a little bit. But what really surprises me is the bounce on these new Hongdian nibs. 
Look at that bounce on that steel nib. I always say that when it's Chinese steel, it's very, very stiff, but the latest Hongdian nibs that I've experienced have been very bouncy indeed. And this nib makes a 0.3 millimeter line to a 0.4 millimeter line, which makes it a Western double XF to a Japanese extra fine on my Richard Binder line width chart, which you can find linked in the description below. And for our quote. And for some reverse writing. Well, it's not flowing at all. It's not scratchy, but just no flow. And some quick writing. Seems to having some issues with keeping up when I write fast, especially on some downstrokes like that and like that. Uh, but I'm going to attribute this to this rather thick shimmering sparkling ink. So what do I like and what do I not like about this fountain pen? I'm not really a fan of these big heavy ornate metal skeleton pens. Get out. So far I've reviewed the Asvine V169 and P80, the Jinhao 100 Centennial in gold, the Laban Skeleton in gold, and this Hongdian A6. The Jinhao 100 is the lightest of them, being a cartridge converter, but it's a bit too ornate for me. The Hongdian A6 seems to be the most comfortable of the piston fillers for me. None of them post well, if at all, but unposted, the A6 feels the most natural in my hand. As for metal pens, I still prefer the Hongdian N11 Blue Rhombus. It's lighter, again being a cartridge converter, and even though the nibs are identical, I find the N11 nib slightly thicker than the identical nib on the A6. I do like the A6 better than the P80 from Asvine, and I do like the A6 skeleton pattern better than the P80 from Asvine skeleton pattern. And I must apologize for missing the spider pattern right there in my review of the P80 as Chris Repsayek so kindly pointed out. I thought the V169 and the P80 had the same pattern on them, but I couldn't see the spider for the webs. And now that I can see that spider, I like the P80 a little less. Thanks for that. And there you have it. If you like this video, please like and subscribe, and don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted. And you can join as a member of my channel for only 99 cents a month, and I guarantee I'll answer your comments in the comment section, and you'll get cool emojis, badges, and sneak peek unboxing videos as well. And that just leaves it for me to say... Thank you... for watching... And that's all she wrote.